Hi, I want to talk about this beast, this evil person who was called uh, Ioannitsa, Ioannitsa Asen, Vlach. Now you see in, the two, in, in 1204, the Crusader Knights had seized Constantinople and they expelled useless, weak emperors of Rome. And when they did that, um, Theodor, La Theodor Lascaris founded the kingdom of Nikia in Asia Minor, northwestern Asia Minor. Uh, Leos Ross founded a small county around um, Corinth, Napoli, in Epirus. Manuel founded the despot E of uh, Epirus in uh, Trapezunda. David Goninos founded the first the, the dynasty. So four kingdoms arose out of um, the conquest of Constantinople in 204. Uh, Baldwin was appointed king in um, Baldwin was appointed king in uh, Constantinople. He was later succeeded by his brother Henry. Um, and uh, the Marquis de Montferrat, uh, Bonifatio de Montferrat, founded the kingdom of um, Thessalonica. A small kingdom was founded in the southern Peloponnese by the, the Biladuins. And um, they also control part of the kingdom of Nicaea. And to the north, this barbarian king, Ioannitsa, Ioannitsa Asen, of Lach, um, created a confederation of, um, of Lachs, that's the Dacian Romans, uh, the Bulgarians, who are Turks, Slavs, and Thracians together. A mix of Turks, Slavs, and Thracians. The Wallachs were a mix of Dacians and, um, and Romans. And the ferocious Kumanian uh, Batsinagas tribes, who are Mongolian tribes, uh, horse archers, barbarians, uh, wild, illiterate people. So he, can, he created this confederation to the north. And the real threat, of course, was. Um, Ioannitsa, Skiloyanis Ioannitsa, Asen the Vlach, the leader of the Bulgarians, the Wallachians, and the Komans. Now, um, in 206, he had killed King Emperor Baldwin, of course, and his brother Henry took over. Uh, many of the Romans briefly took part, joined the forces of, of Ioannitsa, Asen the Vlach. But when they found out he was killing them also, it was then that um, Branas, Conto Stephanus, and other Romans joined with the forces of Henry, the king of uh, the emperor of Constantinople. And um, without even joining with the other, the other crusader forces, they focused on fighting Ioannitsa, Skiloyanis, Asen of Lach of Bulgaria. Uh, and this is the account we get from, um, now this is the brief account we get from uh, Bilal Win himself. And it's, well, one thing we must know is that um, Bilal Win started writing the, the, his account in the year 204 when they started from Italy, they went to Zara in Croatia and they took the city and the, the account stops with the, the death of um, Bonifacio di Monferrat, which took place in 207. He was also killed by the Bulgarians, Wallachians and Comans. So we see two kings were killed by the Bulgarians. King Baldwin of Constantinople and the Bonifacio Marquis de, uh, de Montferrat of Salonica. Both kings were killed by the Bulgarian barbarians and the Comans and the Wallachians. It was up to Henry and his Roman allies to face the, um, face the threat. 
Right. And Henry was also fighting uh, Fyodor Alaska as an Asian miner. And Bonifacio de Mofra was also fighting the forces of Lascaris, of, of Leo Zuros in, in the Peloponnese. So part of the forces, so a great part of the army was destroyed by the Wallachians, Bulgarians and Comans, and part of, the for, part of the forces were fighting the remnants of the Roman Empire. So the forces they could put, they could, they could pit against Ioannitsa Asen of Lach were quite limited. Henry had to do wonders with a small army of knights, um, a really small army of knights and simple folk from France, Italy and the, and, uh, and the German states. So like we said, um, uh, Ioannitsa turned against the two remaining Roman cities in Thrace, Hadrianople and the Dimodichol. Now the Dimodichols were smaller and less garrison than Hadrianople. And the, um, the Romans only, uh, the Franks only controlled Constantinople, Vizi and Selimbria. And Bia in Asia Minor, so that's only four cities. So there were only two Roman cities and four Frankish cities. Only three of them are Frank. So, so, so it's only about five cities left for, for um, Asen of Lach to take over and destroy. So Yonitsa Asen of Lach um, arrived before Hadrianople and he called upon the people to let him enter the city. And they told him they were not allowed to do so and addressed him in the following terms. Sir, when we placed ourselves in your hands and rebelled against the Franks, uh, you swore to protect us faithfully and keep us safe. However, you have not done so, but ruined our empire, and we know very well that you deal with us and you have dealt as you have dealt with our fellow countrymen. When Ioannitsa the Vlach heard this, he went off to attack the Dimodichol. So he erected 16 large petteries around the city and began to construct machines of every kind for use in the assault. Then he started laying waste the country around about. Now the people of Hadrianople and the Modicho sent messages to Constantinople uh, with instructions to beg the regent Henry and Theodor of Ranas uh, in God's name to come relieve the city of the Modicho, which was being besieged. Right. Uh, right, many of those present did not dare to advise our sending any troops out of Constantinople and so endangering in the lives of the few Christians that remain. All the same, it was finally decided that the army should march out of Constantinople and go as far as Selimbria, one of the few cities that remain. Right, so Henry marched out of the city with all the men at his disposal and rode with them to Selimbria, uh, where he encamped outside the city and stayed there for a week. Uh, every day messages came to him from Hadrianople imploring him to take pity on its people and come to their relief. For if he failed to do so, they in this city would be lost. Alright, so he moved to Vizi, which was one of the few cities that remained under Frank's control. It was a fine, well fortified town. Alright, and then they camped outside the walls of uh, Hadrianople. That's June, St. John the Baptist Day. On the very day the encamped, a message arrived from Hadrianople to speak with the region. My lord, we have not come to tell you if you, don't, if you do not relieve the Modichon, it cannot last more than a week, for Ioannitsa's petteries have broken through the fences in four places, and his men have twice got up the walls. So the Romans inside the city uh, beat off two attacks by the Bulgarians. All right. Uh, so in the, in, in the assembly they said, since we come so far, we'll be a level out in disgrace to us if we do not relieve the Dimotico. So we advise everyone to make his confession, all right, all right, all right. So only in all they had some 400 knights and no more. And the simple folk, the followed the 400 knights. So they sent for messages from Andrew and Opal and asked them how many men Ioannitsa had in his army. And they said 40,000 men at arms without counting those on foot. So it was indeed a perilous battle to undertake so few against so many. So in the morning of St. John the Baptist Day, everyone made his confession, read communion, and they marched forth. So they broke for three days in marching order. No army ever advanced to seek battle in more perilous circumstances. 
they were engaged on two accounts. First, they were so few, and those they were about to attack so many. And secondly, because they did not believe that the Greeks, that's the Roman Empire, with whom they had so recently made peace, would give them wholehearted support. On the contrary, they feared that if the army got into difficulties, the Romans would go over to Ioannitsa Asen of Lach, who was now so near taking the Limodichon. However, when Ioannitsa Asen of Lach heard that the French were coming, he did not dare to wait their arrival, but set fire his machines and struck comp, and he, he left the place. Thus he withdrew from the Limodichon, and everyone thought it a great miracle. The fourth day of setting out, Henry, regent of the empire, uh, reached Hadrianople, pitched his cap, and as soon as the people of the city saw the French arriving, they came out in procession, bearing all the crosses and showed such joy as they had never seen before. And well might they rejoice, for up till then they had been far more from comfortable positions. So, and so the city of the Limonicals was relieved, was raised due to the intervention of Henry, the emperor of, the, of, of Constantinople. And the rest of the story, of course, is well known. Henry attacks the Bulgarians, Wallachians, and Comans, but he has to fight Theodor Laskaris, the traitor, in Asia Minor. So his forces are divided. The Bonifacio di Mofra has to fight the Wallachians, and he has to fight Leos Waros and the Peloponnese as well. So his forces are again divided. And in a skirmish near Mosinopolis, uh, Bonifatio di Mofera, the Marquis of Saloniki, was killed by the Bulgarians and Wallachians. And Bilad Wynn stops his chronicle at that point, 2007. And of course, not long after that, seeing that Saloniki had no king, no real ruler, he started to besiege the city of Saloniki. But suddenly, Ioannitsa, Asen, the Vlach, died during the siege, and the Wallachians, Bulgarians, and Comans raised the siege. And Henry was the true ruler of what remained of the, the empire. Thrace, that's Thrace, Macedonia, a part of northwestern Asia Minor. As in the Vlach. So this story is basically the siege of the Limodichor and the threat against Hadrianople, the two remaining Roman cities in Thrace, held by the ally of the Franks, Vranas, and Gondo Stephanos. Tsar Ioannitsa, Asen the Vlach. Now, this is exactly what Ioannitsa, the beast, the barbarian who led the, the Bulgarians, the Wallachians, and the Comans. That's what he looked like. This is his skull, this is a facial. Uh, reconstruction of his uh, characteristics based on his skull. Ioannitsa, the Vlach.